I just came back from the strangest game. I was invited to a party by a friend of a friend, and it wasn't until I arrived there that I found out that my friend had something come up and wouldn't be able to make it. Though I was a bit hesitant, I didn't want to be rude to the friend of my friend, so I knew I had to stay at least for the polite length of time. The reason I was hesitant was because this friend of a friend was a bit weird. Weird in the hot topic sense, where I was reminded of a slightly overweight vampire whenever I saw him. Weird in the poetic sense, where he would occasionally stop in the middle of a sentence, look towards the distance, and say a few rhyming lines about the dark nature of the universe, oh god, and then go back to his original sentence, as if there had been no interruption. I was hesitant, nervous sweat level hesitation. It was different from what I expected, since when I was led into the living room, there was only two other people there. I had been expecting an entire assembly of people. But there was only a young man and a young woman sitting on a red velvet couch. The most obvious feature about the young man was not his pale face, his long black hair, his black eyeliner and mascara, black clothes, or even the odd symbol tattooed in the centre of his forehead. What? what? But the leash that he held. He had a leather leash attached to a leather collar around the girl's neck. She had hair that had been bleached white and it looked frail, limp and wispy as if it would soon start falling out. Her face might have been attractive once, perhaps, but there was too much makeup, and a hollow expression that filled you at once with both pity and despair. My eyes, the wandering little bastards that they are, followed her thin neck down to her substantial cleavage, and further down to her exposed midriff, and that's when I realised that she and the young man were wearing the same exact outfit. My eyes darted between the two of them, checking to see that the young man was even wearing the same knee-high boots, the same why did you even bother wearing any clothes, tight black spandex pants. My friend of a friend introduced us immediately. My name, he said to me. This is Pluton. The man he called himself Pluton stood up. He extended a hand covered in rings and bracelets. Mesmerising, he said. Ooh. And I took that as a form of greeting. I shook his hand and his eyes widened the moment our flesh made contact, as if I had stung him. He held on to my hand though, and after extremely uncomfortable four seconds, he said, You have a monumentous aura. I like you. After letting go of my hand, he turned to my friend of a friend and said, Oh God, I'm going to butcher this. Sanguinatus, what shall we play today? Sanguinatus, whom I mistakenly had thought of was named Thomas. <laughs> said that we should wait to see if anyone else arrived. We'd wait until he finished preparing refreshments, and then we would start. He then went off to the kitchen, leaving me with the young man and woman. I looked at the young woman, realising that I hadn't been introduced to her, and was about to ask her name. Pluton cut me off by asking me what I thought about infinity. After a brief moment, I just said, I try not to think about it. He started to laugh, not a laugh I had been expecting from this slightly higher than normal voice. It was a deep, harsh laugh, as if he were trying to cough up his lungs with each sudden blast. I was actually repulsed to watch him laugh like that. But when he finished, he didn't bother to acknowledge my look of revulsion, but instead smiled. Yes, the infinity of death is a harsh subject. The only true infinity here is, oh, how we all try not to dwell upon the deepest infinity. That which tears the mind and damns the soul. I knew I liked you. Yes, I did. I give a weak smile. Hopefully this was some weird joke. And that he just liked to dress funny and pretend he was the creepiest person in the world. And that in a moment, he would reveal that this is just a normal guy and I'd be able to spend the evening in a normal fashion. He then asked me what I thought about love. I pretended to think about the question, but instead I thought about how to avoid answering it. The simplest solution came into my head almost instantly, and I asked him what he thought about it. Perhaps the greatest mistake of my life. He began a speech, one that may have been rehearsed, about his views on love. I just stared at him, humming the Power Rangers theme in my head, hoping that I could preserve some sense of sanity. Love is not a creation. It is an existence, but not one that actually exists. Go, go, go Power Rangers! Rangers! When death and darkness truly meet, then there, and only there, does true love really... Go, go, Power Rangers! 
Just how Descartes proved that something can't exist without thinking it does. Love is unable to think, and thus cannot. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers! Oh, that was Frit. <laughs> we were so off key there. <laughs> Thankfully, by the hundredth or so time that I repeated my mantra, Sanguinatus returned, carrying a tray with a pitcher of iced tea and two bowls of chips. Pluton, who mistook me reliving my childhood inside my head for enjoying his speech, apologised for having to cut it short, since he was now rather thirsty. He yanked on the leash and without a word, the girl stood up, poured a glass of iced tea, handed it to him and sat back down. Do you Catan? Pluton asked me. Catan? I repeated, confused. An instant later, Sanguinatus had taken the box containing shelters of Catan off his shelf, showing it to me. Yes, I played it once before and told him so. Excellent. Excellent! I'm thinking of Mr Burns. <laughs> I think that should be our chosen game for tonight. I always feel that it is best played with three people, Pluton said, reclining deep into the couch. Three? But there's four of us. Pluton's eyes widened. No! There is only three. He stood up, yanking the leash as he did so, and the girl gave a small cry of surprise and pain. Dragging the girl behind him, he went into a different room, closed the door, and started shouting at her. How dare you! How dare you! <laughs> I can help her. How dare you pretend to be human! How fucking dare you! I swear I will kill you! <laughs> Why well, we got this boy with like this really oh my god <laughs> So what colour do you want to be? Sanguinatus asked me, acting as if nothing was happening. I stared at him, Pluton continuing to scream at the girl, and the silence within the living room continued. Finally, after briefly glancing at the door, Sanguinatus whispered, I know it's different, but it's how they choose to express themselves. Like you might hold a girl's hand, he chooses to hold a leash. It's not all that different, really. Blue, I said, picking a nice, happy colour. Pluton and the girl returned after a few minutes, and both of them had black lines down their cheeks, signs that tears had been shed. They sat down in the couch, and not by my choice, but by his choice of pants, I saw that he had an erection, and he made no attempt at hiding it. Oh, God. <laughs> I was at the point where I just wanted the night to end, to end in a way that wouldn't anger this sociopath and have him follow me home and gut me while I slept. I began to unpack the board pieces and place them out in the coffee table, but Pluton asked me to stop. I have a better table, he said simply, with a sharp yank of the leash. Oh God! Oh, Jesus Christ! The girl stood up and then lay down in the table. She remained there, her pale, flat belly exposed, and I simply stared down at her. Sanguinatus began to arrange the board pieces. For those that don't know, Settlers of Catan uses hexagonal tiles, with six different kinds of land which each produce a different kind of resource, except for the desert, which produces nothing, which are placed within a frame depicting water and boats. Made out of thin cardboard, it had a hard time staying in place on most tables, and this table was trying but failing to keep from trembling. God. Sangi and Attis quickly ran out of the room, having started rather low on her abdomen, and Pluton casually lowered her pants. Jesus to, a, fuck, to a point where I felt the shame that she apparently didn't. She was perhaps a single centimetre away from being completely exposed. I opened my mouth to protest, but I realised that Pluton was now breathing rather hard, rather quickly. His eyes were wide, wide to the point where I was scanning the room to find something that I could bludgeon him with in order, <laughs> in order to protect myself. The moment passed and we each received our settlement and road pieces. We selected where to place our first two settlements. With slight difficulty coming from how our table was shivering, after receiving our first resource cards, we began to play. Settlers of Catan is a game where you complete to build settlements and roads, obtain development cards and turn settlements into cities. In order to do so, you need resource cards, which come in five different varieties, which need to be combined in a specific way. For example, wood plus brick creates road, and sheep plus grain plus rock gets you a development card. 
Resources are generated by having settlements placed in the intersections of land tiles. Each land tile has a number between 2 and 12 and on each turn the dice 2d6 are rolled and whatever lands share that number produce a resource and all settlements that surround that land get that resource. Players are expected to trade and negotiate using the resource cards to barter with the other players. It's a game that requires both cooperation and competition, trust and betrayal and has a surprising amount of depth to its strategy. I don't know why I told you all this, because none of that mattered. Having settlements that give me good access to wooden brick, I was building roads rapidly, to a degree where I managed to actually restrict Pluton to a small portion of the board, blocking him with my roads. This is something that's rather difficult to do, and not entirely a great idea, since the remaining player didn't waste his resources, and now has a larger area to settle. Since Pluton had no room for new settlements, his only hope was to upgrade his settlement into cities and to get development cards. This was a heavy disadvantage, since he would have fewer settlements to produce resources, but he could still win if he had excellent luck. He did not have great luck. <laughs> Slowly but surely, he got more and more upset, as every dice roll seemed to go against him. On a poor roll, he would place a hand on the girl's neck and squeeze her, choking her until I turned to look at him. Before I could say anything, he would let her go, leaving marks on her pale skin. What a cunt, I'm sorry. I know, what <laughs> not the fuck I don't care if the girl's like participating or not. It's This is fucking weird. It's, it's creepy as fuck. still right? fucking weird to do to anybody. It's really fucking weird. Girl or a boy, it's still fucking weird. <laughs> Just don't be doing it in front of people. Yeah, <laughs> get behind your doors! <laughs> By the time I realised the game was purely between me and Sanguinatus, it was too late for me to remember that I was sitting across from a guy who worshipped death and would probably end up killing us all if he lost. Pluton steadily grew more and more violent as the game progressed, digging his fingers into different parts of the girl, slapping her and even tracing thin lines of blood across her skin with a spiked ring. She didn't protest, and even more remarkably, managed to keep the board from shifting too much. I couldn't sit there. I know, I would be like, right boys, I'm away. Mm. I'm packing my shit. And then I'd, I'd turn and whisper to the girl, do you want to come too? Yeah, like, you know, like, this is a bit fucking mad. You're like... But then again, she's quite just as mental as hell. Yeah, honestly. Let's be serious. Don't stick your dick in crazy, guys. Yeah. PSA. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I felt like I should do something for the girl. But this was something that she wanted. I didn't know if I would be doing her a favour if I let Pluton win, preventing him from taking out his frustration on her, or whether she would actually be unhappy that she would miss out on the chance to be further mistreated. Sanguinatus looked like he would be the winner of our game, as he had a far better board position. However, he didn't look particularly happy. The game was now just a distraction, something to focus on in order to ignore Pluton getting aroused as he kept abusing the girl. As I tried to avoid looking at her, I didn't realise for quite some time that the girl was flushed. She was steadily losing control of her breathing, and the board game became more and more messy as herself was becoming more and more aroused. Oh my god, don't tell me she orgasms on the table! We continued to play until we were simply going through the motions. Sanguinatus had clearly won, and we were just waiting for him to obtain the 10 victory points to finish the game. I was making poor trades simply so he would get the resources he needed, but luck wasn't producing what we needed. Finally, after what felt like years, though it had barely been an hour and a half, he finally managed to win the game. There was a brief murmur of congratulations, and then Pluton, unable to contain his frustrations, spread apart the girl's legs and then slapped her as hard as he could on her inner thigh. Her abdominum spasmed upwards, sending the pieces everywhere. As she began to gather up the pieces while Pluton and Sanguinatus organised them inside the box, I set my alarm on my phone to go off three minutes before quickly replacing it back into my pocket. Once the game was put away, Pluton turned to Sanguinatus and told him that he deserved a prize for winning. You may have her for two nights. What? He told him, you may do as you wish. Just as Sanguinatus cheerfully accepted, my alarm went off and I picked up my phone, stepped away from them and started to hold a quiet pretend conversation. I then turned my back to them, saying that I was really sorry but I had to leave. <laughs> Sanguinatus simply said that it was nice that I could come, but Pluton looked rather angry. He stood up, yanked on the leash to force her to stand and then aimed a kick at the girl's legs. 
making her fall to the carpet. Then, as if he had done nothing of the sort, he walked over to me, extended his hand, and said that we simply must play again sometime. I gave a false smile, and then left the house, leaving the strangest game I've ever played behind me. What the what fuck the was fuck? that? Like, seriously? Like, <laughs> These bitches freaky, <laughs> and I don't want to <laughs> mingle wanna... in that. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck this No thanks. What the fuck is this video? Can we, is no this thanks. Even, can we, even post, can this we post this on YouTube? <laughs> I don't know. Fuck it. We'll see what happens.